Ranger Dog has turned out to be one of the most surprising games I've ever played. It looks so basic and simple, and to be honest it often is, but it's also hugely inventive and imaginative and silly, and it features some of the best and weirdest set pieces I've ever come across. Published by Hanaji Games, who kindly supplied me with a copy, Ranger Dog sees you take control of one of three spacefaring canines, complete with lolling tongues and running leg animations, on a quest to, I don't know, defeat some cats, maybe, across seven horizontally scrolling stages. Your only controls are a standard shot and a bomb, with the game utilising an in-stage power-up system to mix things up and grant a bit more firepower. This system sees you shooting power-up icons to rotate them through a varied set of options. Two of them are just variations to your main shot, different for the different dogs, but one usually being a variation on a weaker spread shot, and the other a more powerful focused shot. You can also add one from two missiles, again different for each dog. Both shots and missiles can be leveled up through five power levels, although beware, collecting and switching to the alternative shot type does not maintain your current level, and each weapon has to be upgraded individually by repeatedly collecting the same shot type one after another. If you're happy with your shot power levels, there are three more rotations the power-ups offer. One is a screen clearing bomb, which you can collect and stack up to three of. One is a speed boost, and the last is a protective shield that essentially functions as an extra life. In fact, it's actually even better than an extra life because in Ranger Dog, taking a hit and losing a life sees you drop your powered up weapons down to base level, whereas taking a hit when shielded prevents this most frustrating of punishments. Two of the dogs also have an extra power up, which grants you up to four additional options to provide further firepower. Although these can get a little visually confusing as they do look like miniature versions of your dog. At the start of each stage, there is a rather slowish introductory section which sees you flying through space and the game usually offers up a couple of Gradius style formations for you to shoot and collect a few power ups before the real fun begins. Once past these introductory sections, the background changes and the stage proper begins. Stages are... well varied is one way of putting it. You might find yourself in a Kaiten sushi restaurant shooting seaweed, fish and rice. You might find yourself in a construction yard battling hard-hatted animal workmen, or you might find yourself in some sort of casino blasting away at flying slot machines and trying to catch the coins contained within. And it's not just the backgrounds and enemies that are weird and wonderful, some of the stage progressions and obstacles are truly unique as well. The aforementioned casino stage is perhaps the best example. As the stage begins, you're instructed to collect as many coins as you can. This hasn't been part of the game before, but you do as you're told as you zoom through a speeded up level, dodging enemies, shots and walls as you go, while a coin counter ticks up into the hundreds. Only when you get to the boss do you find out the coins you've saved are your shots for this encounter, as a flying piggy bank drifts onto the screen and you're encouraged to fire your coins into the pig's mouth. The piggy bank has its own counter, beginning at zero and with a target of 150 coins. As you fire coins into the piggy bank, not only does it fire shots back at you, it also swells in size as its belly fills with money until it covers about four fifths of the screen before finally erupting as you hit the 150 coin target. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never ever played through a stage with an even remotely similar progression to this, and not only does it work perfectly mechanically, it's all done in a perfectly silly but weirdly kind of makes sense fashion. On the other hand, something I have seen before is an R-Type-esque battlecruiser stage that sees you fly over and around a massive enemy ship, taking out its turrets and defences before launching an all-out assault on its bow. A take on this sort of stage I've not seen before, however, is having the enemy cruiser be a giant pink sheep with evil eyes, lasers that fire from its mouth, and turrets that fire bubbles and cartons of milk. It's all done in a very knowing way, and it's all very fun. Throughout the game, the bosses are always a real highlight, with every single one being creative not just in appearance, but also in its attack patterns, movement, and weaknesses. 
This extends to the sixth stage, which is essentially a boss rush, except instead of repeating the previous bosses, throws a whole host of brand new creations at you in quick succession. So yes, like I said, this game is hugely inventive and imaginative and is sure to put a huge smile on your face as you make your way through the stages. However, I did also say it's somewhat simple, and that is also true, meaning that having beaten it a couple of times, it's not one you're likely to be coming back to time and time again. There is a harder difficulty, or you could try playing through with fewer lives, but in the absence of any scoring hooks or gameplay wrinkles, this is probably going to be a mostly one and done affair, although you may want to try out the different dogs as each does have a quite different set of shots available. However, given the game's low price, this doesn't make it at all not worth picking up. Just be aware it's not going to be some sort of epic time sink. And replayability isn't aided by those early stage sections either, which while serving a purpose in terms of getting you up to a decent power level to face the main stage, don't offer much in the way of engagement, especially not on repeat plays. However, those first few plays do make the game a worthwhile purchase. Like I said, I have never played sections like some of the ones found in Ranger Dog, and its energy and charm are well worth experiencing firsthand. Don't go in expecting a masterpiece of refinement, but don't write this off either. It's fun, it's imaginative, it has some of the best and most unique set pieces I've ever played through, and the boss fights continually throw up new and inventive surprises that make this a game I'd happily recommend giving a go. It lacks replayability, but it's still worth it at its price, and I'd give it a 7.5 overall. Hanaji Games are swiftly becoming one of my favourite publishers on Switch, and I'm really pleased to see them bringing unusual little titles like this, Barrage Fantasia and Desertopia to the system. And they're also hopefully bringing Mechorit Steel Rondo to us later this year too. Let me know in the comments if you check this out, and thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.